how I took a very used and arguably broken Pac-Man 1-Up Arcade Cabinet and turned it into a two-player RetroPie cabinet that could play arcade games as well as NES, Super Nintendo, and even 64 titles. So a few months ago, I was scrolling Marketplace. I feel like a lot of my videos are gonna start that way. But anyway, I've always wanted an arcade cabinet, but they're pretty expensive and they take up a lot of space, and especially in a townhome, that's a pretty big commitment. However, the three-quarter size cabinet is kind of the sweet spot, which I guess is why Arcade 1UP has been able to pump these out so much for the past few years. Knew this cabinet would go for about $400, and so when I saw it for around $150, I jumped on it and had it in my car within the hour of seeing it. Conveniently, I was already planning on building an arcade cabinet around that time, so I already picked up a two-player set of buttons and joysticks uh, for around 30 bucks, and I also had some pre-stained wood that I'd gotten for free, which would prove to be helpful because the one I grabbed off Marketplace did not have the stand anymore, which helps make it more the height you'd expect it to play at when you're standing, which segues us nicely into the parts and materials for this project. Obviously, we had the Arcade 1UP, which was about 150 bucks. The other key component for RetroPie, of course, is a Raspberry Pi. This price would depend on what one you choose. In my case, I was hoping to use my old original B+, but it proved a struggle even just with basic arcade games, so I ended up donating my uh, Pi 4 for this project, which had a lot more performance and sent me back about $90 when I originally purchased it. Side note though, if I was buying one now, I probably would use that $90 to buy one of the many mini Windows PCs that are chilling on Marketplace and eBay, which would give you a lot more power and you could probably emulate up to PS2 and GameCube even on like a $80 little mini Lenovo or HP machine, even just an office grade one. The box of buttons and joysticks was about 30 bucks on Marketplace, which I think is the same price they are on AliExpress. I just wanted to skip the shipping time, so I got it from a local person who didn't use it. They were gonna build the cabinet similar to me and they just kinda gave up on the project, so win for me. These also came with the USB controllers, so I could turn them into USB joy pads really easily, so that was a very key component. Another important piece is the GeekPie adapter that turns the original display into basically any old computer monitor with HDMI in and VGA and lets you switch the input automatically and gives you even a little control board. And that ran me about $34 on Amazon. I debated off and on if I wanted to get a little amp so that I could hook into the original speaker, but they seemed all pretty pricey. And considering it's just a little dinky five inch speaker, I figured I would just spend less money and buy a used uh, subwoofer and two speakers set off of good old marketplace for like $15. And so that actually gives me a much richer, fuller sound, kind of similar to what you'd have in an original arcade cabinet. Plus this model had a little uh, volume rocker headphone jack thing, which would let me control the volume uh, the way that I'm retooling it. I won't have access to the volume notch in the uh, control panel, so that was an important feature. And the last piece of the puzzle was to find or borrow the correct, or in my case, nearly correct hole saw for the size of buttons and joysticks that we're going to be installing, and then just find a spare power strip around the house and some strong sticky tape to make sure everything's mounted and cleaned up in the back there when we're all done. Now that all that's together, it's time to build. First, we'll grab the appropriate copy of Retro and put it on our micro SD. The instructions on there are pretty easy to find, but I usually use the etcher option and that burns the ISO uh, really fast and easy and then it's ready to go for the Pi. Around the back of the cabinet, we'll unscrew this little control box, which has the old brain for the arcade one-up, which seems to play Pac-Man not even that great. Maybe it's just the worn down joystick in this cabinet, but it seemed kind of unresponsive. Anyway, we'll ditch that and unplug the cables and then we'll get our monitor converter hooked up and mount it just below the panel somewhere nearby so the cables don't have to stretch too much. Next, we'll plug in the Pi and we'll be able to verify that both the RetroPie install and our display adapter are doing their job. Sweet. Don't worry about the orientation being screwed up. We'll cover that a bit later. Next, we're going to give this control panel a massive update from two buttons to 14. And we'll be ditching this cheap joystick and using the two higher quality ones. So at first I did a test fit, just kind of placing the buttons and joysticks roughly where I thought I'd want them to go. Uh, I chose this number of buttons and kind of the layout based on the fact I knew I'd want to emulate up to Super Nintendo, maybe some 64, but I wanted to make sure I had enough for uh, the D-pad, start select, A, B, X, Y, and L and R. Then I pulled the panel off, removed the old joystick and buttons and taped down some paper I could use as a template. Then I used a ruler to try and at least somewhat scientifically measure where I wanted everything to go. I used an awl to all out the center of where all the holes need to be drilled, make it easier for later, and then got to work with the drill, making 12 new holes in the board. Thankfully, I was able to reuse the player one and two buttons from the original layout, so the only spare hole that I had that didn't really make sense was the one smack dab in the center, which is where the joystick was, so I ended up just putting one of the old white buttons in the middle there, which kind of ends up being a 
aesthetically pleasing fidget toy, and no one seems to realize that that's just a dummy button that does absolutely nothing. Hooked up all the cables to the USB-C boards and making sure to keep the player one and two sides uh, exactly the same. I think uh, ETA Prime in his video recommended doing that so they wouldn't get uh, conflicting in their configurations. Did some cable management and buttoned everything back up. Then I popped the panel back into the cabinet, plugged in the joysticks, and went through the button mapping process. The fact that all the buttons were able to be mapped means that all of our buttons are showing up correctly, which is fantastic. As for the screen orientation, that was actually quite a difficult thing to set up because a lot of the documentation online talks about the older Pies, where I guess there was just a little config file you could flip and that made it super easy. On the new Pies, it ended up being a little line I had to add to a startup script that would flip the resolution while it was booting to get it in the right position. I'll add those codes either overlaid on the video right now or in the description so that in case you're finding this video and banging your head against the wall like I was, you'll have that easily accessible. Also, if you're wondering how I got the original arcade one-up animations back after RetroPie was installed, there is a section in the settings called something like splash screens, and if you search online, you should be able to find some rips of those animations or even just some cooler ones that are your vibe, but you can just FTP them onto the Pi, and I'll leave a link in the description to where I found those in case they're still up. Now that this is looking more and more like an arcade machine, time to put in the speakers, plug them in, give them a test, and start tidying up all the back with our sticky tape or screws or zip ties or whatever you prefer. My little speaker control box ran just around the side far enough to where I could reach the volume and turn off the speakers if I need to, and I love that I can also plug in headphones so it's just, you know, adding more value than the cabinet originally had, which is kind of the goal here. Lastly, I popped into the overclocking settings and the advanced settings, changed the ones I felt comfortable with or knew what they were, so I tried to eke a bit more performance out, but I didn't crank it because I do want this Pi to be able to run somewhat 24-7 if I want to get that arcade aesthetic. And finally, it's time to test and see how this thing performs. Starting with the easy stuff, let's just try out Galaga, and I was easily able to get to my usual high-ish score, which probably isn't that high, but I feel like it's high. And so test number one gets an A+. Next, we'll hop over to Super Nintendo, which I thought would be kind of fun considering it's you know a vertical screen and it's this button layout being arcade sticks and not a, uh, a SNES gamepad but then I remembered that these games were designed for a 4 by 3 aspect ratio so it stretches vertically slightly instead of stretching on a widescreen when you'd play these games nowadays so it actually looked pretty tight and the button layout wasn't all that difficult to pick up either if you just consider it's about the same as any other six button game you play in an arcade machine so that's another A plus for this guy now for the 64 so the 64 was a bit of a mixed bag some games struggled in frame rate while others ran pretty much as expected, which can be seen by the Mario 64 flyover sequence here, but I think this is just a symptom of my more conservative overclocking settings in the Pi, but I wanted to preserve the life of the Pi as much as possible. So with all that said, I'd give it a B plus, and with some further tweaking, you can easily get this to an A or an A plus rating, no prob. I'm really pleased with this machine, and it's been a fun addition to the rec room. At the very least, it's a pretty consistent conversation starter for people coming over to the house, and it's been a lot of fun watching people relive their favorite arcade games and being able to enjoy it on a pretty realistic arcade experience. Appreciate you guys. I've got a lot more planned, so please subscribe to keep that momentum going. We'll see you next week, and bye for now.